Does that look familiar to you? And what about that? Popularly known as sine and cosine waves, these must have given sleepless nights to so many students back in school. Some of us are asked to memorize these large tables filled with angles and their corresponding values. But we're going to do something fun today and atomize the concept of trigonometry. We will see how it all makes sense. I'd like you to focus on the sine wave function a little closer. And now let's restart this with another perspective. You observe how the point moving around the circle seems to be in sync with the wave on the left hand side. The amplitude of this wave coincides with the radius of the circle. But how is this point moving around a circle linked to the sine and cosine functions? Let's atomize this together to understand the fundamentals behind these concepts. Sine and cosine are functions that help us discover the elements of size and shape of a right angle triangle in a unit circle. A unit circle is where the radius is one unit which is done so for convenience and calculation purposes. If you were to set your eye at that point and peek out with an angle theta, it reveals these elements of size and shape. Here the green line is the opposite, the blue the adjacent, and the yellow the hypotenuse. The specific ratios of the right angle triangles reveal the formulae for sine, cosine, and tangent. The sine wave that you see is a representation of the change in these values of the ratio with the angle on the x-axis and the value of the function on the y-axis. So at 30 degrees, the value of sine sits at about 0.5, which moves to root 2 by 2 at 45 degrees, to root 3 by 2 at 60 degrees, and it becomes 1 at 90 degrees. This is because the yellow line, the hypotenuse, becomes equal to the opposite. We see this value slowly drop from 1 to similar values, as was seen earlier, all the way back to 0. These values then move towards negative numbers, to minus 1 and then slowly move back to 0 again. And that's how we create a sine wave. To put this in motion and get a deeper perspective, this is what a sine wave in motion looks like. The same concept holds true for cosine waves as well. In this case, the ratio is 1 at 0 degrees, since the ratio is now adjacent upon the hypotenuse. And the motion causes the values to be 0 at 90 degrees, minus 1 at 180, again 0 at 270, and 1 when you're back at the same point. Interestingly, in the case of tan theta, which is the ratio with the tangent formed at the base of the triangle, the graph looks something like that. I leave that to your imagination to interpret why it appears like that. Pause, rewind and take a look at the video again for a closer understanding because there is nothing like learning from observations. Little by little, slow and steady, atom by atom.